want to introduce you to uh, Ivan here, Ivan Barrett. Uh, he, is, he is a multifamily unit owner and syndicator who specializes in FHA and agency finance projects. Since 2015, he has raised nearly $60 million in equity, acquired 2,500 units, and grown Barrett Asset Management to a best-in-class, vertically integrated asset and property management firm. Today, Ivan focuses on equity finance, acquisitions, and company strategy, managing over $250 million in assets comprised of over 3,500 units. Ivan, welcome to the summit and take it away for us. Hey, thanks for having me, Dan. Just to check in here, everybody can see my screen okay and my video is, is, uh, is turned off or on? Yep, it's on. Our video's on, sound's on, and we can see your screen. All right, great. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just readjust here a little bit so I'm not looking too far away from the screen while I'm talking to you all. But uh, again, Dan, thanks so much for having me here. It's great to be uh, part of the summit. I'm, uh, I'm pumped to, uh, to be able to share some uh, information with you guys today. And I hope I get to, uh, to deliver some value on entrepreneurial habits for success. So uh, as Dan said, my name is Ivan. Uh, if you don't know about me, I have a, a company here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, it's a vertically integrated private equity real estate shop. Uh, vertically integrated means we've got in-house management. Uh, we run everything, construction, management, investor relations, everything uh, through our company. And uh, we'll get through some of this stuff here uh, a little bit quickly and get onto the meat. Uh, we manage a lot of properties. We're uh, over 3,000 units. My partner and I own 2,500 of those that we have uh, syndicated ourselves. Uh, we're in three different states so far. Hope to be in uh, four and five states here yet this year. And, you know, we're having a lot of fun. Um, but going back to the beginning, you know, I grew this thing uh, from my spare bedroom. I started this company um, in 2010 in my spare bedroom, doing it all myself first and scaled it to, uh, to what it is today uh, with almost uh, 80 employees. And uh, I've, got to, I've got the, uh, the privilege to raise, um, gosh, almost 65 million now in, in equity for our assets. And just got a great team that surrounds me and get to have a lot of fun. But uh, Gosh, it you know, wasn't always that way. Uh, again, we started this thing. Uh, I started this thing in my spare bedroom. So uh, who am I really? Um, I'm 41. I've been married for 10 years, uh, about as long as uh, it's been since I started my company to my wife, Melissa. We've got three children. And, you know, why I'm doing all this is, is because I, uh, I desire to be successful and, and have this abundant life. And that's, you know, that's not a, a number in a bank account. Uh, there's much more to it than that for me. So it's, it's checking all those other boxes uh, that define success, healthy marriage, um, being a great dad, uh, big life that impacts the world uh, positively, leave it better than I found it. And uh, certainly want to leave behind uh, a legacy. For me, I desire true financial freedom, um, which looks like uh, for me a, a growing business uh, in the B quadrant, uh, which is a, a large company that I don't have to be involved in every day for it to run well. I'm not the center of uh, all decisions and uh, operations. And that allows me to fit that, that business uh, into the life that I want to design. Uh, not the other way around, not having to fit my life inside a business. Uh, and lastly, um, I, uh, I have some high fitness and endurance goals, uh, both for myself, uh, for energy and uh, physical and mental endurance, uh, but also to be a, a great example uh, to my children. So entrepreneurial habits for success. Uh, I've got some several slides here we're going to run through. Um, I'm going to try and keep an eye on uh, any chatting here. I don't know if it's going to work for the, the, uh, the setup that uh, Dan and his wonderful team has put together. Uh, but if anyone uh, has any questions along the way, I am happy to, uh, to answer them or uh, we'll wait to the end and, and go through the Q&A, uh, which I think is probably the standard format. But 
if there's a way for people to raise their hand and the, uh, the host here can, uh, can help me answer questions along the way, I am happy to take any and all interruptions as we go. I love discussion uh, more than presentation. So beginning with the uh, end in mind, you know, it's really important uh, to visualize what the mountaintop looks like for you and, and really get into uh, some of those details. Um, I like to start with a passive income number and figure out a formula that uh, would give me the number of units I need uh, to get that passive income on a monthly basis uh, for my family. And then I, I want to visualize what my family life looks like. I do this on a, on a periodic basis uh, quite frequently. Uh, I'm not a big stuff guy, but travel and experiences are important. You know, some people, it's the big house, it's the big car. Uh, I can certainly relate to that. I like having a nice place and uh, I like driving nice cars. Uh, so hey, Ivan? Yeah. Real quick, I, I don't know, do you have slides you're going through as well? Uh, yeah, I hit screen share. I'm going through slides. Are they not running? No, it looks like it might. It just says Barrett Asset Management, so I might be on the wrong screen. It's on that bottom bar there. Just say new share. Oh, geez. Yeah, we're on the wrong screen, guys. Uh, I'm I not sure how you have some slides on there. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure how to go back and show those slides. So let me, uh, I, let me, uh, if you go to that bottom bar again, it should say stop share and like red or something like that. Let's see here. I got stop share at the top of the screen. I thought everybody could see. Yeah, that'll be, that's stop that'll share. Too. All right. Then find that green button again and press share again, and then just choose the, 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 the proper monitor. Okay. Tell you what, I'll put the slides here. Screen two. Okay, here we go. There we that go. Work? Awesome. Thank Great. You, you bet. Let me, uh, I'm going to go back, guys, and I'll just go through that again real quick. Just a fancy little picture of who I am. I got the family, one of my Spartan races, my daughter out to the side. Uh, again, this is what, you know, what, uh, what I, who I am really and, uh, and what I, I desire and why I work so hard to, um, uh, to get through uh, the day-to-day -day grind of, of growing a, a big, uh, successful business. So. Uh, back to where I was, entrepreneurial habits for success. Begin with the end in mind. Again, we're talking about um, first and foremost, you really got to figure out, you know, what that mountaintop looks like for you. Uh, the big why. Define true financial freedom for yourself. Um, maybe there's a legacy and impact uh, for you as well. Um, leaving money behind for your children or, or charitable organizations or your church. I think all those are um, uh, much greater drivers maybe than, than stuff. Uh, but at the same time, if, if you're looking to do this, you want to have a, some fun along the way. So there's some, some travel and some, some experiences. Uh, perhaps you want to take that, uh, that VIP trip to Disney World with the kids or you want to sail around the Mediterranean for a month. Uh, but getting um, in the practice of visualizing why you're doing this, uh, as well as a formula for number of units uh, that you need for that passive income, if you are going the big real estate route, uh, is, is really important. And this, this translates to any business, whether it's units owned or units sold, uh, service provided. There's some large metric that you can back your way into uh, where you are today and working, uh, working forward. So it's a lot like climbing a mountain in general. And if you climb or walk up a, a mountain, it, it's one of the toughest things you can possibly do uh, physically. But what a good guide will tell you is um, he'll point to the summit or she'll point to the summit and she'll say, okay, there's the summit. Now don't look at it again uh, for as long as possible because it won't get any closer. It's that, like that old saying, a pot that you watch or whatever, however it goes, uh, never boils. Um, the key to all this is once you figure out what that summit looks like and you know you're on the right mountain, it's working backwards with baby steps from there. So for me, I started managing rental properties in my spare bedroom for other people uh, to start getting in cash flow and start 
uh, getting, um, start receiving consistent monthly revenue um, that I could use um, to, to scale that business. And so what I had to do was I, I, I had to do what I hated first um, in order to one day do what I loved. And I, I think that's um, different than what a lot of people are teaching out there that, you know, stick to your passion, only do what you love. Well, that's great. But if you really want to grind out a big business, uh, you have to get started somewhere. And oftentimes, maybe every time that takes uh, doing things that you're not good at, doing things that you hate doing. So for my example, I didn't get into the property management business because I love property management. Uh, I don't necessarily love handling uh, tenants and toilets, right? But I knew that if I could figure out how to grow that management side of it successfully, I could build a repeatable formula that would allow me to grow a business and funnel excess income into my own real estate deals. And it would one day allow me to raise private capital and, and do larger deals with that track record and that team behind me. Uh, so I started managing for others. I used the, uh, the bigger pockets burr method, uh, to figure out how to buy, uh, renovate, uh, rent, refinance and repeat. I think I got all the R's in there for uh, the burr method, uh, smaller multifamily deals, uh, using hard money, private money. Um, I can expand on that, um, on another podcast, perhaps down the way, but, uh, but really good formula to figure out is how to use other people's money, uh, even if it's hard or private, and, and what kind of deals um, that you have to find to where that sort of capital makes sense. And then from there, it became more about building uh, the team and, and finding the right tools and, and self-improvement. We'll, we'll get into this a little bit more on some future slides, but I, I love this quote here that, uh, that we added uh, at the bottom. Um, and, and basically what you're saying there, you know, it's been said a lot of different ways is uh, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. Um, people that are rudderless or direction, directionless uh, wake up and it's, it's been another year uh, and, and nothing's changed. So begin with the end in mind. Um, this I think is, is really important. Know thyself as you get going in uh, whatever business you're looking to expand, whether it's brokerage or management or development or flipping or syndication, um, you've got to understand as, as time goes on uh, what you're good at, what you're really great at, uh, and even more importantly, like what you're bad at and what you're truly terrible at. And focusing on those strengths uh, more than trying to leverage uh, weaknesses yourself uh, so what I did was as time went on, I, I started learning how to find other people to do those things that I um, could handle, but wasn't really good at. And that was a hard transition for me. And it usually is for most entrepreneurs because you're really good at a lot of different things. You might be a jack of all trade and it uh, trades and it's, it's difficult sometimes uh, to to take more time and effort to train somebody else to do something, right? That you might be able to get done in just a couple of minutes. Um, but once you start to practice using this muscle of having other people um, perform tasks that are say a lower dollar hourly rate, hourly dollar rate than you are, uh, which is a term that gets thrown around a lot and I really like it, uh, start putting a, a value on your own time. And if, and if a task can be uh, handled at a lower dollarly rate, uh, hourly rate per dollar, or dollar hour, you, know, you guys know what I mean, uh, then you need, to, you need to hire that out. So if I could go back in time, uh, or if I had to do that again today, I would definitely start out with virtual assistants. And we'll, we'll touch on that again here in the presentation a little bit here and there. Um, I'd love to answer some, some general questions on, on VAs. Uh, there's a ton of information out there. Tim Ferriss has got some great information. I'm sure there's plenty of others that could, uh, that could add value there. Uh, Neil Bawa, another great um, real estate guru, uh, operator. 
um, has a lot of value to, to offer on virtual assistants. And I'm sure Dan's got an experience share or two as well. And as I kept uh, growing, uh, I really figured out leveraging weaknesses, right? Having a yin to my, to my yang. So for me, um, finding good partners uh, that brought complementary skill sets uh, to the table. For instance, I'm really great at sales, really great at developing relationships, raising capital, uh, getting buy-in, creating vision, but I'm awful at the details. I can, uh, I can uh, hobble along for a while, but ultimately left to my own devices, I will screw up the details. So I, I forced myself to figure out how to, uh, through partners and employees, uh, offload those tasks. And it's, it's not easy. And we could spend hours talking about the very process of, of delegating and uh, letting others make mistakes. Uh, Tim Ferriss, again, a uh, great article uh, titled letting, uh, letting the little bad things happen, uh, which is all about letting people sort of fail or stumble uh, so that they can develop themselves instead of giving them the information all the time. Uh, and uh, it's, it's easier said here than done. Um, good news is, though, it's all this stuff I'm going to give you guys is, is pretty simple. The problem is, is it's not easy and it takes work and it takes practice. Um, I oftentimes say this is analogous to um, working out. You're not going to go in the, in the gym uh, on a Saturday or once a week and, uh, and get a six pack or get real strong. It takes uh, daily, uh, small to medium efforts uh, consistently over time that, that really builds great momentum. Continuing education, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because I'm sure you guys have heard all this, but I can't emphasize it enough. Attending seminars like this, uh, conferences, surrounding yourself with other people that are doing um, what you want uh, to do, um, trying to find groups and networks where you're the, the little fish, the little guy, the little gal in the room. Um, is really mission critical. So I love finding a mastermind where uh, I'm the little guy in the room. I've got a couple of those. And uh, it, 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 it humbles me. It, it puts things in perspective. And it, it allows me uh, runway and um, uh, room uh, to, to learn how to, how to go to the next level by cloning or modeling um, what others who have who have blazed that uh, that trail uh, previously are are doing and how they did it. Um, while I'm in the car, <laughs> I love this this uh, addition here. I'm always listening to Audible books uh, or podcasts or, or content. Very seldomly am I listening to music. Uh, in fact, I think uh, music is for high school kids. If you're an entrepreneur and a, an adult and, uh, and you really want to grow, you've got to find these little um, chunks of time to improve yourself and a vehicle, a uh, train ride on the way to work uh, is great. I did a little calculation recently. I think if you listened uh, for 15 minutes a day, I think you would get... Uh, in the average business book is like six hours. I think I figured up, you know, nine or 10 books a year. Um, what's funny is just doing that, you're going to be 99% uh, ahead of everyone else because most people will always just have that book sitting there on a shelf thinking, Hey, I'm going to just, you know, plow through this thing on a Saturday or Sunday or when I get some free time. Uh, and again, it's, it's not about these big chunks of time because those never, appear. It's about finding these little chunks of time to where you can make improvements on yourself and, uh, and on your business. Because we all have the same 24 hours in a day. Uh, Gary V, I'm not a huge fan, but I do like this one. Uh, it's what you do while you're awake. Um, and we'll get a little bit more about giving things up uh, later on here. Again, uh, personal development, education, we talked a lot about that. Fitness has become a big part of my life. Um, when I first started my, my business and, uh, and was doing all these things on my own, I allowed myself to let 
uh, fitness um, fall off the uh, the table uh, because I was so focused on working harder and uh, and growing my business, and I, I still regret that. I've uh, been back at it now for a few years, but what it does uh, by training hard outside the office uh, gives me more energy, more mental endurance. It's a huge um, stress relief, and uh, stress is just part of the the um, uh, the mind field of of growing a business, being an entrepreneur. So you got to find these ways to relieve stress, and then recovery is is just as important. Uh, especially anybody on here that's over 30, as time goes on, you've got to give your body um, uh, rec recovery techniques. So I foam roll just about every day. Uh, I focus on getting to bed by 9 or 9.30 at night. Nothing good happens after 9 p.m. Sleep is huge uh, in this business. And then I'm a big fan of cryotherapy and Normatec, uh, which allow me to recover faster and train harder. Uh, and then mental health uh, really, really is is um, uh, first plays into that that physical health. But having having good mental health and focusing on on having uh, that mindset, uh, I'm a fan of of of, uh, of, of church and of, of God. Um, however you define that, though, having a spiritual connection, um, I think is important. You know, I can't prove it scientifically, but I think the law of attraction is, is, is real and it exists. And the more you focus on these types of things and apply actual uh, hard work and mental focus, the more these things tend to be attracted to you. Uh, and I, I definitely believe a law of the universe, whether you believe in, in God or whatever you might call uh, that higher power, uh, giving back your time, your energy, and certainly your capital uh, will be delivered back to you at least twofold. So I have found as, as we've grown our cash flow and grown our revenue and, and, and been able to give back more uh, to church and to charity, uh, the more, the more uh, responsibility I'm given. The more I, I let capital flow through me, the more, the more capital comes to me. And uh, I love this quote by Tony uh, Robbins. If you haven't uh, really followed much of what Tony has to say, you should. Uh, he's a great, great um, uh, figure in this personal development and mindset space. A real decision is measured by the fact that you've taken new action. If there is no action, you haven't truly decided. And um, I'm always shocked at how many people go to go to seminars and uh, and get the education, but then um, lose sight of the even the most small steps that could be taken immediately uh, to start building that momentum and those those habits that lead to success. More on mindset, mind, uh, mindset, positive content. I have a business coach now. I've had coaches uh, almost my entire career. Uh, that's that's part of the, the team here. I know we talk a lot about real estate teams, attorneys, title companies, inspectors, lenders. Uh, having a business coach that can hold you accountable and keep you on task for some of your biggest goals and the steps that you've laid out to get there is, I think, um, extremely mission critical. Uh, personal coach, same thing. Um, any sort of ways in your life that you can you can stay inspired some people have pictures up uh in their uh in their office you can't see mine uh but one i have over to the side is a picture of uh david uh standing on a headless goliath holding uh holding goliath's head in his hand as the uh as the army watches in awe and uh, that reminds me, uh, you know, that, a, that a, a little guy can defeat a giant. And it's a, it's a great little motivation for me. So there, there's all kinds of motivational content out there. It, it, it really is like going to the gym for your body and keeping your, your mental um, uh, state accurately or, uh, or correctly calibrated. Goal settings obviously huge. I won't spend a lot of time on this one. You guys know you should do it. Uh, some people say daily. 
I think if you're if you're not looking at your goals at least weekly, um, you're probably gonna gonna lose some uh, productivity, uh, some effectiveness, um, and then going back to them and constantly um, uh, redefining them. So for me, for instance, a few years ago, uh, my my goal was ten thousand apartments, and today it's twenty thousand. Uh, where it might be uh, down the road, who knows? Goals can always change, uh, but without them, we, again, we lose sight of, uh, of where we're going. Uh, this is one of my favorites here. So mistakes for me, I call paying tuition. Um, learning, allowing mistakes to happen both on yourself and as you grow as an entrepreneur, other people, um, instead of looking at that or the perspective that uh, mistakes cost money it's more looking at them uh at the as the perspective that, that it's paying tuition um i could go on for a whole webinar about the mistakes that we've made and the tuition we've paid along the way uh from buying a you know a small bad deal uh to hiring the wrong people uh there's, there's so much that, that we could expand on here but what keeps me going as an entrepreneur is the mindset um, that this is leading me to where I should be going. That it, I'm not that failure and and mistakes and paying tuition is simply part of it. And um, gosh, you know, I run across people. Uh, just the other day, I ran across a guy um, who had shut down his his company of 13 or 14 employees. Uh, because he just gave up managing people and he said it was too hard and it was always dealing with people problems. And it reminded me of the story about mining for gold. Um, I'm not going to get into the whole story here, but uh, there's a great story out there about how a couple of guys uh, gave up uh, a mine and uh, the next guy that comes in and buys it literally hacks for like one minute because the last guys gave up literally a, a couple of feet away from one of the biggest gold, uh, gold veins ever discovered uh, in the West. And so I really felt for that guy uh, that, you know, he probably gave up just a little bit too soon. What you have to do is realize that people are going to make the real estate side of your business seem easy uh, most days and learning how to manage and lead and grow a team is uh, one of the most difficult uh parts of growing a big successful company um again i can't repeat this enough it's not rocket science it's just hard and a lot of it is just sticking with it and not quitting and uh learning from mistakes and, and seeking out the advice of others i think i expand on this a little bit more here uh down the road but Again, those coaches, I also uh, am a big fan of EO, Entrepreneurs Organization. Um, the second you can qualify for one of their accelerator programs, or if you already qualify for EO, my advice is just write the check. Um, there is something magical about being around a small group of entrepreneurs that have companies, have to make payroll just like, uh, just like I do on a monthly basis. Uh, learning and sharing and growing together as entrepreneurs. Um, I, I, I can speak with uh, uh, great confidence that I've avoided several strategic F-ups uh, by learning from, from my peer group and, and their experiences that they're willing to share with me. Uh, we've talked a lot of, about that never quit attitude, uh, remembering, um, uh, you know, the, the, every step gets you closer, right. Or, or can get you farther if, uh, if you're not focused. And, you know, I think this is huge. It doesn't matter where you are now, as long as you keep moving forward. And, and that's where a lot of people, um, fall off and, and, uh, and never get started because the, that mountaintop, that summit looks so far away and so impossible. Um, meanwhile, you've got, uh, you know, somebody that, that was never expected to go very far, but, um, figures out that putting their head down and just, and just learning how to put one foot in front of the other and then continuing to do that and not stopping, uh, can lead to great things. 
And one of my favorite sales trainers out there, if you're not listening to Grant Cardone and you want to be an entrepreneur, I don't think you're doing it right. Um, I had my first sales job at 13 and uh, my dad was into all this uh, mindset and content from a very young age. So I've, I've heard it all from Earl Nightingale and Zig Ziglar uh, all the way to today. And I think uh, Grant Cardone has got some of the best uh, sales training personal finance and personal development content right now uh, on the planet. He overlaps with a lot of the classics, but he, he definitely has a platform that delivers it uh, extremely effectively. And we use that in my business. And I, I use that to keep my mindset, uh, my inspiration, my motivation, and, uh, and my, my sales acumen uh, operating at a high level. Mentors, teachers, and coaches, we've already expanded on this um, quite a bit. For me now, um, you know, my best mentor uh, is a guy I just get to meet with a few times a year. He owns um, about 15,000 units now and manages, I think, another 15,000 as a third-party uh, manager all over the Midwest. Uh, prolific developer, huge company, great culture, and... Uh, you know, it's just great to be able to sit down with a mentor like that a few times a year and just pick his brain um, with no expectation of me uh, doing anything for him. And uh, he told me, I think this is our second meeting, um, that another Indianapolis prolific real estate uh, multifamily owner and operator who since passed away uh, would do the same thing for him about 20, 25 years ago. And, um, you know, that really... Uh, leads me to, to impress upon everybody on this call that your mentor is out there and maybe already in your network, um, but searching them out and, and approaching them in a, in a thoughtful uh, manner uh, will certainly lead to great value. And the reason why uh, he did it for me and that, that gentleman did it for him is because someone else did, did the same thing. Right. And so in most industries, uh, real estate certainly included, there are always those of us that want and desire to pay it forward uh, because somebody did it for us, you know, not not to uh, not for any uh, a gain or compensation, but just there's a bucket that we need to fill in our lives. Uh, and, and that part of that is that that giving back and that paying it forward. Uh, let's see here. I already talked about. Uh, masterminds, EO calls it forum. Again, EO is entrepreneurs organization, global network. Uh, there's chapters in just about every city uh, and all across the globe. Great network of entrepreneurs. I've raised capital there, uh, but more importantly, I have learned so, so much uh, from other entrepreneurs, most of which are not in real estate, most of which are in different sorts of operating companies uh, that are doing it differently uh, than inside my little real estate box. And I've got to glean um, countless golden nuggets by being part of that network and, and being in those smaller uh, real estate groups. Um, Rod khalif has got a great mastermind, uh, and there's, there's many others. Um, I'm sure Dan's got uh, several uh, networks uh, chock full of entrepreneurs and operators. The the point is you just have to get it. You know, I, I go into these things and I, I write the check, I fire first, then I ready, then, then I, I aim uh, because it's not really all that easy to figure out what you're going to get out of something before you do it. And part of it is what are you willing to put into it? But every time I go to one of these masterminds or events um, or, or boardrooms, I get at least one nugget out of it that more than paid the expense of the, uh, the time, the travel, the accommodations, and the, uh, the price of admission. Also, I'm in a, a men's group uh, in my church, which just helps keep me centered and keep me accountable as a, as a man, as a father, as a husband. Um, there's all kinds of other things out there. Uh, I'm glad my assistant uh, put Toastmasters uh, on here. I almost forgot about this one. If you are not a public speaker. I highly recommend Toastmasters. I can speak from the heart here. Uh, in college, I took a full letter grade lower freshman year uh, because I couldn't get up in front of the class and give a speech. I kind of just uh, stayed in the back of the class. And when they asked if anyone hadn't 
get, gotten uh, their chance to do a, uh, their speech on any subject they wanted to, uh, now is the time. And uh, I, was, I was too chicken shit to do it. And uh, my dad and my brother encouraged me to join Toastmasters. Uh, fast forward to today, I'm on stage uh, several times a year, and uh, I really enjoy uh, being up there. And it's a big part about being an entrepreneur um, and, uh, and growing your brand. Uh, Bigger Pockets is a great, a great uh, uh, platform to be a part of. If, you, uh, if you're on there helping others in, in an authentic way, uh, it will come back to you. I know, Dan, uh, you would echo that. It's not about uh, me, me, me. It's about helping other people uh, learn. And uh, that has a, a, a karma effect uh, every time. This is one of my favorite quotes of late. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And then Napoleon Hill, one of the godfathers of all this, uh, no two minds ever come together without thereby creating a third invisible, intangible force, which may be likened to a third mind. And Napoleon Hill also went on to say that that mind is now more powerful than the sum of the, uh, the parts of the uh, separate minds involved. Great example of that is my, uh, my business partner, Adam. Uh, he is the yin to my yang. And together, uh, we're quite opposite. We do different things for the business. We uh, stay out of each other's way most of the time. And we're, we're racing as hard as we can in our lane and our given uh, areas of, uh, of mastery. And no question, as a team, uh, together, um, we are much more powerful than we would be uh, as separate. And I can be the first to say, uh, <laughs> if, uh, if Adam didn't have me, uh, he'd have maybe 50 rental properties at this point in his career. And uh, if I didn't have Adam, I would have, uh, I would have imploded years ago. <laughs> so... Uh, it, it, takes, uh, it takes two minds uh, in our mastermind uh, to, make, to make our machine uh, that much more effective at execution. Uh, speaking of which, managing teams and people, again, uh, we, we've already talked a lot about this, but you know, filling in your own gaps, uh, finding those weaknesses. Today, if I was going to start all over, my first three hires would uh, very likely be virtual assistants. You don't have to go to the Philippines or India. Uh, you certainly can. I use uh, U.S.-based premium assistants uh, because mine are more focused on, uh, on strategy and project management for me uh, and then um, sales. So I use one that's um, uh, an executive assistant, client facing. Uh, she chases down my investors uh, when I wanna get them on the phone or when I wanna talk to somebody new and tell them about my business. Saves me easily 10, 15 hours a week just coordinating phone calls and lunches. Um, my marketing assistant, it, it's awesome. Again, uh, premium US based. She's more of a project manager and will actually go out and engage other virtual assistants uh, for graphic design. If you've seen some of my LinkedIn posts, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, so my virtual assistants will run other virtual assistants and it, it's quite effective. And I would build my property management company with more of that uh, if I was back to my early days. Um, and then again, uh, as you're, as you're hiring, you know, an assistant manager might be that, that fourth hire. Um, all this is really though, dependent on where your strength lies. And, uh, that's, that's something that, um, everyone needs to figure out for, uh, for herself or himself. Uh, <laughs> this is another favorite quote here. Uh, don't let anyone rent a space in your head unless they're, unless they're a good tenant. Looks like I spelled tenant wrong, uh, but uh, you guys get the point. A uh, few more hacks. I uh, can't say this enough. Virtual assistants give me a lot of effective uh, brain power uh, multiplication um, without uh, having to hire uh, full-time additional employees. We use Slack in our business to communicate. We detest email, so we look for good good, great tools that allow us to collaborate in real time without email. 
Um, if you don't have a business coach, I would strongly consider one. Then a few more little things here, uh, especially for you young guys and gals out there, if you're listening to this, before I started my own company, I worked for somebody else for almost, uh, almost free and was only paid if I sold something. And uh, I, I got that from Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and several other sources. Work to learn, uh, not to earn. And uh, spoiler alert, you still got to work your ass off. Nothing can replace hard work. Uh, and a great hack, I still do this one um, on a periodic basis, is I make a list of stuff that I need to give up. Uh, to get what I want. Uh, fantasy sports was an easy one for me because I'm like the only guy in Indiana that's not a big sports guy. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes we had to, we had to delay vacations, uh, getting to bed early, you know, not being out every weekend. Listen, I get FOMO just like anybody else. Uh, it's hard seeing my friends go out and partying all weekend long and, uh, you know, getting drunk from Friday afternoon to Sunday night. Uh, but I tell you, if you want to go big, um, you, you got to give some of this stuff up. And I think we can all admit there's probably some friends in our life that aren't adding value, that are maybe uh, adding toxicity into our lives. And I would, uh, I would strongly recommend figuring out ways of uh, dissing your, distancing yourself uh, from those people. There's a lot of recommended reading here. Maybe Dan could post it for me um, later. It's also on my Instagram page. I'm pretty easy to find. Ivan Barrett, no period, no middle initial. Uh, if you spell my name correctly, B-A-R-R-A-T-T. Uh, I am a big fan of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's not the end all be all. I know some people um, you know, get fed up when they, uh, they don't get rich after reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but it is the foundational framework for a lot of, uh, of, of successful uh, entrepreneurs and investors. A little update I put in here. I think if you haven't read a lot of Kiyosaki, uh, his new book, Fake, is a really good uh, basic primer on, uh, on, on the Rich Dad Poor Dad story, but also what's going on today with money and, uh, and how, it's, how it's used, what it really is, uh, how the, the rich play by a different set of rules and really how the poor and middle class are, are getting, uh, getting the shaft. Um, that's a whole nother debate, but if you don't want to get the shaft uh, and you don't want to work for the rest of your life and, uh, and die broke, uh, I think it's a great path to, uh, to, to read uh, and research. Uh, if you are looking to get into the multifamily game, I'm still a fan of the big classics. Multifamily Millions and Emerging Real Estate Markets by David Lindahl. There's tons of great books out there. Um, real Estate Game is a great overall basic primer. And then if you really want to understand property management, Ken McElroy has got some good books on, on property management. Got a whole other list of stuff here. The rabbit hole goes pretty deep. Uh, I'm not going to get into to all these, but it's a mix of uh, economic, financial history, um, what's really going on uh, with the dollar and what, uh, what power has done with, uh, with fake currency since the dawn of time. Uh, there's some really good investment books on here. Hopefully you can take a screenshot real quick. Uh, and some great demographic uh, books. And then um, because there's a little bit of you know, doom and gloom um, tinge in here, Another great book to sort of balance out your, uh, your reading uh, would be Unleashing the Second American Century by Joel Kurtzman, uh, which is the four forces of economic dominance that will lead North America and the U.S. for another 100 years of prosperity, which, uh, which I believe uh, will be the case, maybe not for everyone, uh, but certainly for, uh, for real estate entrepreneurs that can learn how to be successful. And then a couple of classics from John Maxwell. Guys, uh, that is my presentation. Um, I am happy to stay on as long as you'll have me to answer uh, any questions or expand on anything. Great, so for those of you who are on, if you have any questions or comments for Ivan, you can certainly type them there into the comments box and uh, we'll answer as many questions as we can. Ivan, I, I really enjoyed your session. That's funny because there's a lot of things that you do or have done in the past that is very similar to me 
And, uh, and one of the things I would say specifically is, is about the music. You know, I, I have uh, you know, one of my partners, Brandon, always gives me a hard time because I, I'm driving down the road, I don't listen to music. Even my children, when they're riding in the car with me, you can ask them, like, what, what, what does daddy listen to music? And they're like, no, he doesn't. It's either a podcast, and even when they're in the car, I'm listening to a podcast, and you know, there's certain podcasts you can't listen to when the kids are in the yeah. car. <laughs> maybe, maybe that Grant Cardone one. <laughs> No, you can't listen to much Cardo when the kids are in the car. <laughs> At least not until they're older. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely, and, and I'll even, you know, listen to some of my own podcasts because you know, I've done podcasts before. Well, I'll go back and listen to them. And I learn things because when you're, when you're sitting there, you know, you know, as the host, you don't learn as much. If you go back and really listen to it, you can really digest even some more of the information from the people who are actually speaking because your mind is in a different frame when you're trying to be the host and come up with the next question or come yeah. up with to talk about so, yeah yeah for sure one of the other things i would mention too is is I, I like that you have more than just a mastermind that you attend that is just real estate because i think a lot of times we, we can we get into these masterminds or these events that's just with what we are focused on and i like what you're doing with the entrepreneur organization and being part of that forum and mastermind that it's not just real estate obviously having a real estate segment of it or a sub sub you know form of it or whatever um, but I'm part of one right now called the War Room Mastermind, and it's being put on by a group called digitalmarketer.com. And it's Ryan Dice, Rowan Frazier, Perry Belcher, you know, Richard Lind Lindler. A lot of you might not know who those are. Those are really high level, you know, digital marketing people. And they host an event once a year with like six or 7,000 people that come down to San Diego once a year for that. And uh, I've been following them for many years, and it's, it's, it, they have very few real estate people in there at all but it helps me level up and that kind of change my business from a different way versus just from, you know, the real estate side of things. Absolutely. I'm going to have to get that from you. I might want to join you next time because uh, yeah, I, I can't stress that enough. There's so much to be learned from entrepreneurs that aren't in real estate. And uh, I think a lot of times um, young entrepreneurs get so focused, young real estate entrepreneurs get so focused on, you know, reading another real estate book, uh, when they should really uh, be reading about how somebody grew a business outside of real estate, engaging with un other entrepreneurs in other verticals, other industries, uh, because there's just so much uh, buried treasure there that you can bring home and, and apply uh, in, your, in your real estate business. And I would, I would say that probably my greatest uh, breakthroughs were, were from that, you know, Slack um, is a pretty um, ubiquitous, common, commonly used tool now. Um, I started using it in early 2014 uh, before anybody knew what the heck it was because I, I was hanging out with uh, a tech entrepreneur. And he's like, hey, you know, I'd love to have you over to my office and show you what we're doing. And uh, I'm like, heck yeah, man, I'd love to see it. So I'm over there and I'm looking at all this cool stuff and they're um, – they're, they're building devices for buses on college campuses so you can see when your bus is coming. But there's all these screens and they're all like typing on these screens. I'm like, what is that that, that everybody's communicating on? And that's when I learned about Slack. And at that time, you know, me and my team were getting like 300 emails a day and it was, uh, you know, things were slipping through the cracks. And, uh, and that, that enabled uh, us to work a lot smarter and, uh, and, and, and a lot fewer things slipped through the cracks when we, uh, when we made the jump. Well, and, and that's the thing is, is that you surrounded yourself with people that were doing things on a different level than you were. Yeah. So Surround yourself where you're the one, you're the main guy. You're the, you're the guy that's, you know, the best person in the room. And you, know, you have to obviously, you know, you know, give back to people who are trying to get to your level as well. But then you have to always put yourself in a position where you need to take yourself to the next level, which... <laughs> But that's why I like being in that war room mastermind. I've, this is my first year in it. It's been about, uh, I guess, 10 months into it now. And they have a, another session, another mastermind next month in about two weeks in, uh, in Laguna Beach, in uh, the Montage in Laguna Beach in California there. And uh, nice. uh, there's people in that room that are $100, $200 million net worth. And that's the kind of room I want to be in to really, really kind of make me pick myself up, you know? Yeah, man. Me too. Me too, for sure. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to get, get with you on that one. Yeah, I love yeah, being, being a little fish in a big pond. You know, when you're, when you're younger, you get a little intimidated 
you know, maybe or uh, you get a little chip on your shoulder. And now at, you know, at 40, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actively seeking out, right, those networks where I can be the littlest guy in the room. It's, uh, it's, it's how you grow. Yep, absolutely. Well, Ivan, thank you so much for being here and uh, sharing this information with us today. Uh, I'll, if you can sh um, get those slides or at least those slides that you want to share, um, if you want to get those over to Stacy, just have your assistant send them over to my assistant, Stacy. And we'll be yeah. sure post the video. We'll just post them alongside it. So those that want to have that list and stuff like that, they can access that. That's perfect. We'll do it, Dan. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ivan. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Me too. It's great having you. Uh, great being here. Thank you. Thank you.